Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Connection Church. We're so glad that you're here with us today, here in person. And if you're here online today, thank you for being here with us. If you're online, just text the word online to 706-979-2438. We'd love to know that you've been here with us today. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord today, folks? Yes, it's a wonderful day to be here today. And we're so glad that you are. And if you're new here with us today, thank you for taking time out in your schedule to come be with us here today at Connection Church. We're so glad that you did. There's a Connection card there in the seat in front of you. Uh, if you would, look, we'd love for you just to fill that out. And on the way out, back in our Connection Central, if you want to stop at one of our new here stations, we'd love to be able to take that card from you and have a free gift there for you. And listen, by doing that, by turning in that card, you're already making a difference in the lives of someone else. Because every card that gets turned in, Connection Church, we're committed to make a donation in your name to a group that's called A21. And A21 is a group that helps pull people out of slavery, to pull people out of trafficking. So make sure that if you are new here today, you can make a big difference in someone's life by just filling out and turning in the card at our new here station there in the back at Connection Central. And thank you for being here. Folks, our regular connectors, let's give a round of applause for our folks that are here with us today. Yeah, we're just so glad, so glad. Listen, today you didn't know it, but you're going to a wedding. Yeah, we're going to a wedding today. So we're going to jump into the scriptures here in John chapter 2. We're reading through John, through John the book and working through that. And Pastor Mickey's brought us some great messages already. Uh, and as we jump in today and we're going to a wedding, today uh, what we're going to find out is the best is yet to come. So if you will, join with me. Here in John chapter 2, and we're going to read about 11 verses here. This is going to be our text here this morning. I'm going to be reading from the New International Version. It says, On the third day, a wedding took place in Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to a wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. And then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. And they did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who drawn the wine Draw on the water new. Then he called to the bride, bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheap wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best to now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory, and the disciples believed in him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, that we're coming, Lord, here together, Lord, as a church, as a body of believers, Lord, as a group, to be able to come and worship you. And, Lord, as we dive into the word, Lord, we see, Lord, that you were involved in our everyday activities. And, Lord, as we continue to go through this morning, Lord, that you'll reveal to us, Lord, to how you're continuing to still work, Lord, in our everyday activities and the things that we go through. I pray, Lord, that you'll just speak today to each one of us. In your name I do pray. Amen. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today. And that how it usually starts? Yeah, starting out the wedding part. You know, you get, you get in life. There's different stages of life. And in this stage of life that, that some of you are in right now, uh, school's coming to a close. And as school comes to a close, if you're a, a student, you're getting ready for summer. You're singing Alice Cooper, school's out forever. Uh, if you're a graduate, you're getting ready for graduation. If you're a parent, school's out. What are we going to do all summer long with these kids? But then it moves on. Think about the cycle. You grow up, you graduate, you start dating, you have a wedding, you have a birth of a child, school starts, you go through school again with your child, they graduate, they have a wedding, then you have grandkids. Woo! There's a lot that goes on, isn't there? It's kind of a never endless cycle. And as we think through that today, and as we look in this scripture today, as we see Jesus, isn't it great that Jesus just goes everywhere we go? He's always with us. And as we discover in the scriptures that he enjoyed life. And that's what he wants us to do too. In fact, one of our core values here is we choose joy. And we want to see how God and how Jesus works through that. But let's look at this first part. In John today, uh, John is the book that records the fewest of Jesus' miracles. 
he only records eight different miracles that Jesus did. And six of them that he records are unique to the, just to the book of John. And in fact, the one that we're looking at here today, where Jesus changed the water into wine, it's only found in the Gospel of John. So let's, let's go to the scene. Let's go to the scene to what's happening here. We're seeing a wedding. We're seeing a wedding banquet. And at this wedding banquet, it told us in the scriptures that Jesus, his mom, the disciples, they had all had been invited. Does anybody uh, see who wasn't invited that you thought might would have been at this wedding from this group? This is where you can interact with me. Who are we missing in Jesus' life? Who's not there? Joseph, his father. It's not mentioned. Now, here's the thing that we know. We really don't know. <laughs> That's what we know. We really don't know what happened to Joseph uh, at this period of time. We don't know if he had passed away, if, you know, he didn't do weddings. We're not really sure, but we're really on the leaning of the side that he probably is out of the picture, that he probably did pass away uh, before this. And that's an absence that happens here at this wedding. It's going to be important as we get later on. But also in the account that we read, uh, did you notice that in this miracle, there was no one that was raised from the dead? There was no one who was miraculously healed. There was no one, nobody who was the benefactor of a few loaves and fishes to feed the masses. It just wasn't there. But there was a miracle that took place. There was a miracle that took place, and that miracle to change the water into wine, you know, what Jesus did, his first miracle was for the pure enjoyment of the people that were there. For the pure enjoyment of the people that were there. Does that encourage you? It encourages me. Because a lot of times in those miracles, Jesus wants us to enjoy life. He wants us to have those things in life. And he performed this miracle purely for those that were there. We're going to discover later on some of the implications that came from that miracle. So let's think about the miracle. Let's think about big miracles for a minute. Uh, everyone wants a big miracle in their life, right? Who doesn't? I mean, everybody's looking for a big miracle. And that's great to have because some of those big miracles in life are the ones that are the most important to you. It may be that you've been praying for someone to come and have Christ enter into their life and then accept Christ as their Savior. That's a big miracle. You may have atheist friends, and you've been praying for them, and you're thinking there's no way that that's ever going to break through. I'm telling you, keep praying, because God can break through the crustiest of people. He can do it. You may have been praying for a big miracle in your life to get that next job. You've been looking for a job promotion. You've been looking for a new job. You've been trying to figure that out because the job that you're in, you're, you're, just, you're just done with it. And you're praying for God to open up a way for you to have that big miracle. And those are great big miracles. The miracle of having one of your friends to be healed. Maybe it's your wife. Maybe it's your husband. Maybe it's your parents. Maybe it's your children. And they've got an ailment. And you're praying for them. And God needs to come and do a big miracle for you. And you're praying for that. But on the other side of it, what about the missed miracles the missed miracles have you ever thought about that in this account that we read uh, of where Jesus changed the water into wine who knew what had happened Jesus did he did it the disciples because they were there his mom knew what had happened and also the servants they had known what happened but everybody else at the wedding party they didn't know what had happened how many times do we have missed miracles in our life? That's something to dwell on, something to think about. You know, uh, working in retail, I have a, a variety of people that come in. And a lot of times they like, uh, you know, we'll greet them and say something to them. A lot of times they'll say something back and it'll be on the, on the lines. Yeah, you know, it's, it's really good to see you. It's better to be seen than to be viewed. Now, <laughs> that's just sometimes, did y'all get that one? We got to loosen up just a little bit. It's better to be seen than to be viewed. Okay, we're, we're catching on. <laughs> we got to have a little fun here, too, you know, through this process. But, uh, you know, it's in the, through those things that, uh, that a lot of times we got to think about what are those missed miracles? You know, the miracle, I have a lot of guys that will come up. You know, I, I was able to get up this morning. Well, if you're young, you don't think anything about that. Your body still works. Uh, for some of us, it doesn't. <laughs> it's a little harder to... You've heard the phrase, roll out of bed, <laughs> just don't hit the floor. <laughs> it's going to happen as you get older. That some of these crazy things happen in our life. But it's through these missed miracles. Now, let me ask you this. Some of you that maybe are parents, some of you that have nieces, nephews, some of you that have grandchildren, do you enjoy 
just doing things for them? Do you just surprise them with some things, you know, through that? Uh, bring them little goodies, uh, you know, take them somewhere, pick them up, uh, do those things. Maybe it's through somebody that you, that, that's your, your, your spouse or somebody that, that's one of the young people, maybe you're courting, uh, that you like to do uh, good things for them and you just do it out of love for them. How did that happen? I'll tell you it happened. God loved. He loved you. He loved me. And he loves to be able to do things for us. He loves to do even these things that sometimes it might be missed miracles, but to do them in our life because he knows what you like. He made you. He knows what you enjoy. And he likes to bless you because that allows him to have a deeper level in your life to understand who he is because he cares that much about you. He delights. Now, here's something you have to remember through this. It doesn't, if you're not seeing those, uh, those missed miracles, it's not because you haven't been good enough. It's not based on your performance. It's not based on my performance. It's solely based on God's goodness because they're there. They're there, those missed miracles. If you start looking for them, you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed at where they are. So let's, let's get back to the wedding here. we get back to the wedding, to what's going on. Uh, so we're talking in the wedding there in verses 1 and 2. We find out there that there's something that has happened, and all the wine's gone. Now, I'm not sure how big this wedding party was, and for today's time, we know that weddings only last for a few hours. But in the Jewish culture, the wedding ceremony could last 7 to 10 days. Imagine have those in-laws at your house for a week. <laughs> it just wouldn't be good. But, you know, the, the parties lasted for 7 to 10 days, and you had to be fully prepared for what was coming, to have enough food, to have enough drink, to have enough everything to be able to have and enjoy the celebration that was going on. And here they were, it looks like pretty early into the wedding ceremony, and it was done dry. There was no more wine to drink. Now, in that process, we're not really sure, you know, what all was going on with it. But I think about that, you know, the equivalent of running out of wine at a Jewish wedding would probably be the same thing as running out of barbecue ribs at a crump cookout. That is social embarrassment in its highest. That is social embarrassment. But here's Mary, and we don't know what her connection is to this family. We have really no idea. We don't know if she's, you know, we know that she got invited, so she knows them. Is she really that concerned about the situation? Or is she saying, can you believe they ran out of wine? You know, we're not really sure uh, to which part of that is. But through her talking about what was there and knowing what was going on, she basically, when she looked at Jesus, she says, they have no more wine. Now, guys and gals, remember when you were younger and mom would throw you some hints. Mom would give you some hints like, the trash is overflowing. What's mom really trying to say? Get the trash out. You're right. Or maybe mom's going over here and she says to you, the dog's at the door again. What is she trying to tell you? Take the dog out. The dog's got to get going. Or here's the one that, 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 that the teenagers love. Somebody's room's really messy. What is she trying to tell you? Clean up the room. Yeah, you got to get it done. Mom hints. Mom hints through these things. She's trying to, to help Jesus know that there's something going on. And a side note here too. Guys, you know, next week is Mother's Day. So there could be wife hints that happen all week. So make sure you take notes so that you can have a big miracle instead of a missed miracle. <laughs> so work on that through this week that you need to make sure that that's going on. You know, Mom is wise. She, she helps and she tries to get in things going on. And she tells that to Jesus. But again, we really don't know. We really don't know what she expected him to do. Now, that's a hard concept for us at this point in our life because we've read about Jesus. Jesus has done miracles already in your life. You have seen miracles happen around you. You have to remember at this point in Jesus' ministry, nothing had happened yet because he had just got started. So, you know, Mary might have been thinking, you know, because Jesus and all the disciples that came to the wedding, maybe we put a strain on the system. Why don't you and the disciples run down to the, to the local grocery store and pick up some stuff so we can make everything okay, make it through this thing? You know, we don't know what she was looking at. But then here comes the revelation, the revelation in this in verse 4. And here's what happens. Jesus, after Mary had told him, 
that they've ran out of wine. He looks at her and says, woman, now I got to tell you, yeah, yeah. we got to just stop right there just a minute, don't we? Can you imagine that all of a sudden, woman, wake me up next week because I just got socked into it, right? You don't, you know, this, it really sounds kind of bad right there. Uh, and he says, woman, why do you want to involve me? My hour has not yet come. Uh, you know, it sounds bad in reading it because we're reading it in our context to probably how we think it might would have been said, you know, in that process. But, you know, it could have been, woman, why do you want to involve me? Now, the point of that is the ladies tell us it's not what we say, but it's all about how we say it. Right, guys? Getting us ready for that. It's all about how we say it. Well, let's just take this on and, and see what's happening here with this. Woman, why do you want to involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. He's not being disrespectful. Jesus isn't being disrespectful to his mom. There's some Jewish uh, history that goes along with this. And you have to remember, when we talked about Joseph earlier, when was the last time we heard about Joseph in Jesus' life? It was when he was about 12 years old when he decided to stay back at the temple. And mom and dad, three days later, had to go hunt for him. That's the last time we've heard about Joseph. So a lot of times in the Jewish culture, the children would stay with the mom and learn all the household stuff, do those kind of things up until they were about 12 years old. And somewhere around that time, they would go into the family business. And they would stay with the father or in the family business. And somewhere around the age of 30, there would be an opportunity a lot of times for them to step out. Do we remember, uh, anybody remember about what age Jesus was when he started his earthly ministry? Around 30. So here we are. We're at that point in Jesus' life. And what he's doing, and he says to her, woman, why do you want to involve me? My hour has not yet come. He's saying, yes, I am a man now. And I know that I am. I'm getting ready. Things are beginning to happen. But I'm not at this moment sure if this is where it's supposed to start. Now, there's going to be a lot of rapid things that happen after this, through this process. But he's letting her know that the parental bonds are no longer necessary. That they're not binding on him anymore. That he has stepped out to be his old man. He's called disciples. They've been invited to this wedding. They are there. It's going to happen. And through that, through this quickness of Jesus going through this, because we see in the next, you know, we see in the next verse, Mary says in verse 5, do whatever he tells you. He hadn't committed to anything. <laughs> but can't you imagine that just that moment that you've had those experiences with, with your mom or with your dad, that there's the, the exchange, there's a look, and then there's an action. Mom's counting on you to do something. And you do something. You go figure it out. But here's the neat thing about Jesus. In a few chapters from now, when we get into it, in chapter 5, we're reminded that Jesus said most assuredly, I can do, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. For whatever he does, the son does also. I got a feeling the in that Jesus had with God, that he was in tune enough that when he realized what Mary had said, that he checked it out with God and he said, now's the time. Now's the time. So in verse 6 and 7, as we look there, we discover these jars. And in, in this verse, it talks about the jars that are there, that they're stone jars 20 to 30 gallons. So we're going to just for our purpose say they're probably about waist high. You know, stone jars that are that big. They hold 20 to 30 gallons of water. And the water that it mentions in here that was for that was for, was for ceremonial washing. A lot of times when we're reading through the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament, you'll read about the opportunities that people talk about that they can't defile their self, that they can't become unclean. And it's through associations of different things. Well, in order for that to happen in their life, they had to have the water to be able to take. There was the water to be able to take and clean themselves because the people, and we serve the same way, are concerned about cleaning up the outside. And they had all this water so they could clean up the outside before they entered into, into the temple, into the sanctuary. 
So these are here, there for a reason. We're going to get back to that. But through that, those are there. And he tells them uh, to the servants, he says, fill them to the brim. Fill them all the way up. And they fill those up. They fill up those jars and they fill them to the brim. Now, in that process of doing that, you've got Jesus, you got the disciples, you got Mary, if you're keeping your scorecard, and now we have the servants. Remember, they're all involved in this miracle that they don't know what's about to take place because it's never happened before. So there's a discovery that happens at this point. Us being on the other side, you know, we've read through our Bible, we've read through stories, we know what Jesus is about to do. We remember reading in the Old Testament about Elijah who was able to hold off, you know, pray to God and hold off the rain. And during that process, there became a famine in the land, but God took care of him through a widow and her son. And he was able to fill the flower pot and fill the oil pot for the entire three years before it ever rained. So it never ran out. So in this discovery, Jesus could have, when they were pouring the wine out of the wineskins, caused them never to run out. Wouldn't that have been great? That they never would have run out. Look, we're pouring it all out. It never runs out. That could have been great. But it wasn't what was needed. It wasn't what was necessary. You know, he could have kept those wineskins full. But there's a bigger thing at play here. In verse 8, he tells them, Draw out some and take it to the master of the banquet. And the servants did so, and they took it to the master of the banquet, and he tasted of the water that had been turned into wine. He didn't know where it had come from. And he said, Man, this is the best stuff ever. Where did this come from? Why y'all been holding out on me? And he tells the story. He says, Usually, after the people get drunk, they bring out the watered down stuff. They bring the cheap stuff. But you have saved the best till now. Basically, what this fellow was doing, he was letting out one of the secrets of wedding planners <laughs> that the wedding planners uh, would plan to try to make things affordable. It, it's no different today, you know, that they're trying to plan to have a great event, but you got to stretch the dollar. You got to stretch it. So he's letting out one of those secrets of what was going on uh, in that period of time that you have saved, saved the best till now. Jesus knows your life. He knows and he's aware of what you're going through. He knows that when these things that happen, where there, there are opportunities for big miracles, he's there to help do a big miracle. What we sometimes forget again is the missed miracles. He's there for the small details in our life. He's there to show that he loves you. He's there to help give you pleasure. He knows what you're going through. And, you know, when we go through things, there's different things and different levels. But a lot of times in our life, we'll go through something and we'll call it a storm. And sometimes those storms are really bad in our life. And sometimes it seems like those storms just keep going on and on and on. It's a lot like the wind this past week. When that wind came in on Sunday and it was still blowing on Thursday, it was just causing a lot of havoc, causing a lot of things to go on. Can you imagine being, being in a storm and there be the rain, and there be that, and you've been out there floating around for a couple of weeks, and he, that storm's going on, and you're praying for relief in that storm, and you're asking for God to remove the storm, when in sense, God may be trying to get you to understand, hold on to me during the storm. Don't pray for it to be gone, but to pray, Lord, let me hang closer to you. You know, if you want a rainbow, you got to have some rain. If you want to see the rainbow, you've got to endure the rain. And sometimes that can be hard. I get it. I understand that. So when you're in your next time, when you're praying to God and you're going through the storm, instead of praying for him to remove the storm, pray to him, Lord, what do you want me to, to do in this storm? What do you want me to see in this storm? How am I supposed to? And he will reveal that to you in a moment. You know, he will reveal that to you in that moment. And when it does, even though everything's going on around you, you'll get that peace because you know it's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. You know, you may get a few cuts and scrapes and scratches along the way, but that's okay. Scars remind us of where we've been. Scars remind us of that. 
And it's all right for that to happen. So in that quiet time, when you're asking for wisdom, discernment, and patience, be willing to wait. Be willing to wait. We rarely understand God's timing. And God's timing in most of our lives is going to seem a lot slower always than what the speed of the events that are happening around our life. Trust his time and trust to know that he has his best for you. He does. So in, in this situation and in the situation of our life, you know, if Jesus had stopped and filled those wineskins, if he had stopped when you were in the storm and just pulled you straight out of it, would you have encountered and experienced the power of, of Jesus and the power of his love the way that you do because you held on to him through it? you got to go through it. And I know that's hard. And I know that there's things in your life to where that it is hard to go through that. But I want you to take a moment. I want us to all take a moment now. And you can bow your heads uh, through this. And I'm going to talk to you for just a minute here. I want you to take a moment. And uh, I want you to be honest with yourself. Uh, we've seen through this morning to how much God loves us. That he loves the details and he loves you so much. He loves us more than we realize. So I'm asking you this morning, are you focusing more on the adversity, the hard things in your life, than you are on the face of Jesus? Just keep to have your heads bowed. Are you focusing more on those things. God wants to take those things from you. He wants us to cast all of our cares upon him. And let them go. Not to take them back. But to cast all of our cares. To cast all those things to him. And let him take them. And let him have his perfect way with those in your life. He wants to do that. He wants you to understand and experience him greater. This morning you may have came in here this morning. And thinking, God, I'm going to give you one more, one more chance. I'm going to let you speak to me one more time. Because I haven't been seeing you. I'm just riding this storm out and things are going on. This is God and his Holy Spirit telling you, this is the time to hang on to him. Don't hang on to the storm. Don't hang on to the bad things. Don't try to figure it out on your own because you're not going to be able to do it. you got to let him do it. You have to let him do it in his own way. Yes, he could have kept the wine skins from running and keep them from that coming out of them. But then it, no one would have ever known. It tells in that last scripture, no one would have ever known. But it was through his way of doing it that we could see him. That we could see him. Lord, as we continue, Lord, to have our heads bowed and we pray, Lord, to you. We thank you, Lord, that that we can experience you, Lord, in so many different ways. Lord, to whether it be the storms of life, to whether things that are going wrong around us are through the joys of life. Lord, through where the birth of a child, Lord, through the graduation of a child, through a grandchild, Lord, through a new job, through a spouse, Lord, through relationships. Lord, that you're there and you're working, Lord, through every one of those details. And I pray, Lord, that you will help us to, to work through those, Lord. And Lord, as... As Mary said, Lord, to the servants, do whatever he tells you. That we take that, Lord, and we put that in our life today. I pray, Lord, for everyone in this room, for myself, Lord, that we do whatever you tell us. And on the front end of that, that we understand the answer is yes. That sometimes you're going to ask us some things that don't seem to make sense. That they're a little crazy. That they're not the normal things to do. And that's where you want to work. That that way you and only you receive all the glory for it. That the only way that those things could have worked out is because there's a God in heaven and he has a son named Jesus. And through them, through you, through us, that you work all things out. Folks, as you continue to have your heads bowed, remember this. This life is not your best life. Don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Because God has the best life for us through him and through our life with him afterwards. He's bigger than our obstacles. He's bigger than the issues. He's bigger than all those things. And he wants you to cling on to him today more than anything. 
Lord, I do take a moment and pray again, Lord, as we close out, Lord, here today. Lord, if there's anybody here today, Lord, that needs you more in their life, Lord, in these ways, that, Lord, today that they will experience your peace, that you will fill them up with your Holy Spirit with joy to know, Lord, that you've got them, that you've got them right where they are, even though that everyone around it and their friends may be telling them there ain't no way this is going to work out, that they have the confidence leaving here today, Lord, that they know that you've got them, that regardless of what happens, you've got them, that you're going to take care of them. They will work out the way that we're thinking. Oh, a lot of times we, we hope not, because a lot of times our thinking is not the best thinking, that your thinking and your ways are always better. And let us see that. Let us accept that. Let us grab a hold of that. And when we do, that we share that with other people because our story of salvation is never ending because you're always working in our lives so that we can share life with others. I thank you, Lord, for that. I thank you, Lord. Lord, for all these things, we pray in your name and for your sake. Amen.